Hi everyone, Aisha with Retro Handhelds, and today we're going to be taking a look at better back ones for the RG353V and the Mio Mini. Now, before we get into that video though, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to follow us on our socials, they're going to be linked down below. And if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the better back ones for the Mio Mini. And on the Mio Mini, I actually already went ahead and installed them. So we're just going to take a quick look back here. But the process is very, very similar. So anything you see me do for the 353V is going to pretty much apply for the Mio Mini. And we're just going to take a look at the buttons here. And the build quality on these is really, really good. They don't feel like just a 3d printed piece they actually feel very very good and the ergonomics on them are much better so it doesn't just address one of my issues with the devices it actually very much improves them making them some of the most comfortable back ones on any vertical handheld even the previous best in my opinion which was the 351v those were a lot better because they were stacked different heights these are just in a straight line and these here not only do that but they also make it more comfortable and an easier place for you to rest your fingers so big big improvement if you wanted to get a set of these you can get them on etsy the link's going to be down below and there's also going to be a discount code for 10 percent off if you want to go ahead and, and use that so yeah these are fantastic pieces but let's actually get into how to install them and it's actually pretty easy now before we get started though we're going to turn the handheld off all right once that's off wait for the LED to turn there we go we're gonna pop the micro SD card out set that aside we're not gonna need it right now let's move the Mio Mini out of the way and the first thing we have to do here is remove six screws back here these are gonna be hex screws so make sure you have the appropriate tools the pieces you need are going to be with the buttons when you order them, but you are going to have to provide your own tools. There's also going to be a little bit of um, sandpaper in case you need to sand anything, but I didn't have any, have any issues with the fit. Now, let's go ahead and just pop these off. Okay, so once those are out, you're going to want to go ahead and pry this open. So you just take a little prying tool and you can start right here where the micro SD cards go. Just make sure you take them out first. There we go. And it should open up. You want to make sure you do it on this side first where the micro SD cards are because both the battery and the Wi-Fi antenna are going to connect on this side and you don't want to damage that on accident. So we're just going to disconnect these. There we go. We're going to set this aside because this is the only set we're going to need. So next thing is we're going to take just our Phillips head. And take these two out. And like I mentioned, the Mio Mini is going to have the same setup. So everything you've seen up to this point, it's going to pretty much be the same. Just uh, the difference is the Mio Mini has a battery cover that just pops off. Unplug the battery and there you go. Same steps. Take the screws out and everything. All right. We're going to take these out. Set them aside. Now... We gotta take these triggers out and these can be a little bit tricky just because of the angle so just be patient with it and angle them out now here i have a little bit of tape in these because i don't like them to have any wiggle just makes it feel a little more solid so we're just gonna make sure i leave that in there i also added tapes to some other spots and i'll show you where that's at in a little bit 
just kind of work it side to side and then you can be able to take it right out grab it wiggle it a little and there you go grab it wiggle it this one does it there we go now there's it out we're just going to set these over here to the side and now we're going to take these and throw these in there these are also going to be marked so that's going to be l1 that's going to go on the outside Take this in there, slide it in, pop it in, and there you go. Go on to the next one. Just make sure you put them on the, on the right side. Now, be careful because the first time I tried doing this, I actually accidentally broke this little clip here and I had to super glue it back on there. Not an issue this time, but just a heads up to be gentle with it. Now, the next thing is you're going to take this little clip here and you're going to slide it in here. Oops. There we go. Just like that. So make sure those little clips there are over the um, this little part here. So now we're going to take our screws again. Repeat on the other side. Grab this. Slide it in there. Tighten it up and that's it. Make sure they're on the right side. There we go. And now we're just gonna put everything back together again. Now, before I close that up again, I did mention that I put a little bit of tape on the hinges there. I also added a layer of tape right here. I don't know if you can see that. It's just electrical tape. I did it here and on the volume buttons. That's just to make them sit a little bit more snug. It's only one layer. If not, you won't be able to press the buttons, but it just reduces the rattle a lot. And I like that it doesn't make as much noise but anyway once those are on there we're just going to clip it back on see there's almost no rattle now and we're going to put the screws back on there so switch this again Okay, and there we go. Now, like I was saying before, these buttons are a big improvement from just the stock ones, which are just flat and not the most comfortable ones to use. These, when you're holding it, your fingers just naturally rest here and it's really easy to tell what you're pressing. So you're gonna just use the tip of your fingers for L2, R2 and right around the knuckle, the top knuckle of your finger just for L1, R1. And these are a big improvement from what Amber Nigger usually does with their back buttons, which are just super clicky. These are more of a more satisfying, but 
more dull sounding click. Let's see if I can get it a little closer here. So this is what the 351V, the previous best shoulder buttons on a vertical handheld sound like. And these are the new ones. Now these, while comfortable, can get annoying. These aren't that bad. So here we can get a comparison. This is what I was talking about, the different heights, which just make them a little bit more comfortable. Now these are very distinctly different heights and much easier to press. It's more enjoyable to press. Now the Miu Minis are a little bit different, but the quality on both of them is great. But since the Miu Mini is so much smaller, the design is a little bit different. Whereas when you're grabbing this, your finger sits like this. While over here, more of your fingers on there. So this has to be a little bit different, but they feel very similar when you're actually pressing down on them. Now this Miu Mini is a little bit unique because this is actually two Miu Minis in one. And unfortunately when I was doing this, I dropped my Mini and the screen broke. And that seems to be a very common problem with the Minis that the screens are very sensitive. And I thought I was gonna be out of a Mini because they're hard to get a hold of, but a friend of mine actually had one with a bad video card and he sent me over there to see if I could just remove the screen. Now the problem is this one was a V1 Mini Mini and this one I think is a V2, which they're actually a little bit different because the batteries are different and the actual shells were modified. So I had to modify it a little bit to make it work, but it did and turn this on real quick. This is a fully functioning Franken Mini V1 slash V2. That was actually pretty easy to do. All you have to do is right in here, yeah, right in there, pop this out. So those two screws right there, the post, you have to shave them down a little bit just to make it fit, but that's how you do it. So if you ever need a screen replacement for a mini and can't find parts for it, and you just so happen to come across one that has a good screen, but is a different model, just know that it will work. And now the reason why I didn't just swap the screens is because when I was trying to, the glass came up, but the screen stayed in there and I didn't want to take my chances with it. So I just went ahead and used the front of the shell and I kind of like the way it looks. But yeah, here we go. Better back buttons for both handhelds. But this is a huge improvement. If you find yourself using either one of these two handhelds a lot as your daily driver, it is well worth it to just pick up the buttons like you just saw. It's a pretty easy mod and while you're at it just go on etsy on uh, sakura retro modding store too pick up some buttons pick up some stickers you know customize your handhelds a little bit i'll throw a couple links down in the description so you can kind of shop around for some things but definitely definitely get the back buttons if you can and don't forget there's a 10 percent off coupon in there just go ahead and follow the link and i hope you like them i hope this video helps you out if you bought some and weren't sure how to get them on there or if you just weren't sure just know that this is definitely worth it so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time